Hey there, we're going to start this video by doing a quick review of the six trig function definitions and then we're going to jump into solving right triangles. I've got sine, cosine, and tangent. And then the reciprocal functions, the reciprocal of sine is cosecant, the reciprocal of cosine is secant, and the reciprocal of tangent is cotangent. If you remember the word SOHCAHTOA, it will help you um, remember the definitions of sine, cosine, and tangent as referring to a right triangle. So how we do that is we look at the SOH stands for sine equals opposite over hypotenuse, then I have cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent equals opposite over adjacent. So Katoa. Okay, let's look at one of our examples. Okay, here's a problem. And this one involves solving right triangles. Now before we do it, let me just read this to you. It says, when solving a right triangle, you're usually given one side of a right triangle and one of the acute angles and are asked to find one of the other sides. Or you might be given two sides and asked to find one of the acute angles. Now when I look at this triangle, I'm trying to find this leg. Now I can't use Pythagorean theorem because I don't have two of the three sides. So I look at what I have and I decide what trig definition uses these three pieces. I've got an angle, the side adjacent, and the hypotenuse. So Katoa would tell me that that would be cosine because cosine of any angle is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Okay, so in this case, the cosine of 75 degrees would equal x over 40. That's a simple algebraic equation to solve. I'm just going to multiply both sides by 40 so that they cancel on this side and I have x equals 40 times the cosine of 75 and if I put that in my calculator I get that x is approximately 10.35. Okay, the next problem that I want to look at involves angle of elevation and angle of depression. So I want to just put this in front of you so you can get a look at what those mean. If you're talking about the angle of elevation, that means the angle that's formed from the horizontal looking up towards your object. If you're talking about the angle of depression, that's the angle that's made with the horizontal and looking down at an object. For example, if you have a plane that's flying, and that's what we're going to look at here but you're always looking at the angle that's formed with the horizontal. Like if you look straight ahead, there's an angle that's formed when you look up to an object or if you look down to an object. Okay, a plane flying over level ground will pass directly over a radar antenna. It is 12 miles on the ground from the antenna to the point directly under the plane. And the angle of elevation from that point on the ground to the top of the antenna is 23 degrees. Find the altitude at which the plane is flying. Okay, now you can assume on this that this plane is flying in a horizontal line straight across. So his height is going to be the same all the way across here. So his height is x, whether we measure it right here or here or over here. He's maintaining the same height. So let's take a look at our antenna, which is right here. The plane is going to fly directly over that antenna. That's my x. And 23 is the angle of elevation. So if I'm standing with my eyes right here and I look up to the top of the antenna, 23 degrees is my angle of elevation. And I have 12 miles here on the ground from the antenna to the point directly under where the plane is right now. So let's take a look at what kind of equation we're looking at. Your picture might look a little bit differently. You could have drawn your triangle a little bit differently and that's fine. But now when I look at this angle I have I know the adjacent side and I'm trying to find the opposite side. So the trig function that's involved here is tangent because I know that the tangent of theta is the opposite over the adjacent. So when I fill in what I know I've got the tangent of 23 degrees has to equal x 
over 12. And when I multiply both sides by 12 and put this in my calculator, I get my answer. So I get x equals approximately 5.09, and so my conclusion is that the plane is flying at 5.09 miles high. Okay, let's look at another problem. If a rope tied to the top of a flagpole is 35 feet long, then what angle is formed by the rope and the ground when the rope is pulled to the ground 25 feet from the base of the pole? Sometimes the hardest thing about these is getting the picture right. Um, you've got your flagpole right here. Here's my flag. Here's my pole. And I'm tying a rope on it to a point on the ground 25 feet from the base of the pole. I'm trying to find this angle. So I look at, I've got an angle, an adjacent side, and a hypotenuse. So I'm going to look at cosine. The cosine of an angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. So in our case, I've got the cosine of x is 25 over 35. So I'm going to need to put that into my calculator and see what that is. Okay, the cosine of x is 0.7143. It's customary to write trig values to four decimal places. So now I know that that's what the cosine is, so what's the angle? Now to find that, as, um, as I told you before, you have to use what I call the jeopardy button. That's the cosine negative one button on your calculator. It's usually the second function of the cosine button. All right, so if I push that button and then put in my 0.7143, and then hit enter, it will give me the actual degree measurement. And in this case, what I end up with is that x is approximately 44.4 degrees. Now make sure that when you do this calculation, your calculator is in degree mode, because if not, it's going to give you an answer in radians. Okay, here's our last problem. A six-foot man standing 20 feet from a street light casts a 10-foot shadow. How tall is the street light? Okay, now I've got the picture drawn, and um, this is going to be important that I have a six-foot man um, standing in the same light as that, that uh, lamp. Because what's true is that the angle that is made with the man is the same angle as with the, the street light. So when I look at my large triangle, I, I know what I'm looking at is I have an opposite and an adjacent. So I know that I'm looking at tangent. So the tangent of theta is x over 30. Now the problem with this is I have two unknowns. I don't know what theta is. I don't know what x is. Now if I look at the smaller triangle here, I think I can find what theta is because I actually have a 6 and a 10. So that's kind of a separate problem, but I've got the tangent of theta is the opposite, which is 6, over the adjacent, which is 10. So the tangent of theta is actually 0.6. So let's take this equation and move it down here and fill in 0.6 for the tangent of theta, because I just found that the tangent of theta is 0.6. So now I've got 0.6 equals x over 30. This is relatively easy to solve. I just need to multiply both sides by 30. And I get x equals 18. That means that the height of this lamp is 18 feet. Mm -hmm.